Good morning guys, so we have a handbag, a full size suitcase and a hand luggage bag because today we're off to Dublin. We've got a butler's hot chocolate. There's a Molly Mullen statue in the background. I am officially in Dublin. So you'll have to excuse, I've obviously got my mask on. I honestly, until I was here, did not think this trip was going to happen. It's been rescheduled three times. Then new variant raised its head literally last week. But I'm officially here. I'm so excited. I packed my makeup into my suitcase and then um, we couldn't get into our room so we had to leave the luggage so I am makeup free but most of my face is covered so you probably can't tell anyway. I'm actually about to head for a meltdown cheese sandwich which I've been waiting for for the best part of two years it feels like now. They're so worth a follow on Instagram. Don't go look if you're hungry because you will leave the page hungry for nothing but an amazing cheese sandwich. Let's go get one. Look how cute this is, best in snow. Let's get a hand and a foot thing in it and then you've got mistletoes with the peel and a moisturising foot mask. Look how lovely this packaging is. If I painted my own nails I would definitely be tempted by these. Look how beautiful these are. I'm in a Boca and I'd always heard about the homeware from here but they've also got amazing beauty products and some really nice clothes. It's quite um quite anthropology vibes. I know I teased the cheese sandwich and we are going soon but I'm going via the shops and I'm going into the Powers Court Centre. So behold the purveyors of the cheese sandwich I've been looking at for like a year and a half on Instagram. Might have to try this one before I go home. The happy cheese miss. Probably get it without the stuffing, but yeah. Turkey, bacon, cranberry, brie and white cheddar. I'm all over that. Sweet baby cheeses, which is cranberry, mac and cheese, stuffing, scallions, brie, cheddar and caramelised onion. Yeah, they both sound pretty good, minus the stuffing. I'm just not a stuffing person, unfortunately. So I have ordered the Ballymolo melt, which is Ballymolo relish. Mature white cheddar, bacon, scallion, and then I've also added caramelised onion to it. And I think it's going to be a toasty made for the gods. We went to Melt, but basically there's no seats. It's just a takeaway place, which I didn't 100% realise. I don't know if the Montague Street one has seats. That was the Leeson Street one. So I am back in St Stephen's Green. So what happened was my parents were like, no, we don't want to take away and eat outside. It's too cold. So they went to Chatter and Verse, which it was just the place that's a few doors down from Meltdown. And he had sandwiches, which were very good according to them. But I waited it out, got my Meltdown. So they're away back to the hotel. It's nearly two o'clock, so by the time they walk back and whatever, um, hopefully the room will be ready or they can sit in the hotel for you for until the room's ready if we do need to wait till three o'clock. But I've got the goods. I'm very, very excited. Although I am fully expecting to be like mugged by a seagull for them. But let's get in about it. I said it was going to happen, didn't I? Seriously, look at this sandwich. Like, actually, just look at that. Oh my god. Have had a bite. Can confirm. It is 10 out of 10. 
I'm going to go have a look in the Disney shop because we don't have a Disney shop in Glasgow anymore because they shut them all. It's a Disney store in Dublin, Minnie, she's wearing like Irish dancing shoes and oh, it's a dress. I'm on Grafton Street, I'm going to head into Brown Thomas, but I really love this m and like can you guys see? Like there's these sort of like vintage looking signs and it almost looks like it's been something else and they've kept it but I don't know if they have because it all kind of matches up so that one's like restaurant although that one there says beauty, toiletries and gifts but like so underneath the restaurant one is the cafe then there's men's wear up there ladies wear fine gifts for all in lingerie and then the actual storefront's really nice too and they've got Christmas trees above the sort of main bit but yeah, I love that. It's like, you know, as if it used to be all the different shops and they've kept the original signs and it's very, very pretty. But in a much flashier way, this is also very, very pretty. And this is where we're heading right now. Look at these really pretty archways that they've got at the top of every escalator. It's like him drawn to find the food, isn't it? Oh, I wonder. No, they're not going to have any of the bottles. That was just a silly thought. I just got myself excited for a moment, but no, they're definitely not going to have them. I love this shape of vase. I really like this pattern. I feel like the birds are a bit more obvious on, on this one, but I love that size and shape. It's beautiful. I mean, these are gorgeous. Isn't it just so pretty? Also, apparently Miranda Kerr designs stuff for Royal Albert these days. Who knew? It's very pretty stuff. the arch and down to women's wear. So this dress had been on my wish list to look at. I don't know how it looks on the camera but it looks so short. Like I don't think I'm a prude and I'm only like five foot and a bit like I'm tiny height wise but I feel like I'd be wandering around paranoid in that and it's so beautiful. I love the colours. Like I love the texture, I love the like orange and gold trimming. It just I suppose I wouldn't know until I tried it on, but it just looks t I mean that's an extra small, maybe that's making it look worse, but I don't know. They just all look really like like there's the waist. And there's eight I don't know. Just not sure people need to see what I had for breakfast, you know just not the vibe but the colours are beautiful okay I have been in Brown Thomas so I've swatched I've been at NARS so the very top swatch is the Rue Bonaparte the sort of nude coloured eyeliner then I've got the Grafton Street eyeliner which I feel like I want to buy because I'm on Grafton Street and then I've got night clubbing eyeliner I think that no night porter eyeliner which is very beautiful and then I've also swatched the Night Porter eyeshadow, but I've kind of rubbed it off. I want both these eyeliners, both the green ones. I'm not so fussed on the, the nude one, but I have heard good things about the eyeliners in general, so it might be quite a good nude one to get, but specifically Grafton Street and Night Porter. It's getting a little bit darker now, so you can sort of see the lights coming on on Grafton Street. This is the Bank of Ireland, and if you stand right in front of it, annoyingly, you see the tree, but you don't see, they've got two beautiful wreaths, and it's all very lovely, but like, they're right in front of a gate, so I can't get it properly without coming to look through the gate, and when you're on the right, on the same side as the gate, 
you can't really get the perspective but it is a I mean can you see those doors like they're big doors look at the tree impressive very impressive much joy so I'm walking into the upper part of the city so um, you can kind of see it behind that tree there but that's where the Millennium Spire is so the Millennium Spire actually replaced it used to be Nelson's column and in the 60s it was blown up um, don't even know personally how it lasted till the 60s given obviously the Easter Rising happened in 1916 then you've got the Wars for Independence in the 20s um, you know so Ireland like then becomes a republic obviously and for whatever reason there's this like symbol of the British Empire hanging all over them they blow it up seems fair to me so that that is the Millennium Spire kind of replaced it still talking to you about the Millennium Spire and you definitely can't see it now but anyway I'm about to get emotional guys I am walking up just to see the GPO in real life I am booked on Wednesday to do it properly tour and whatever this is it this is when it happens I feel like it should be like roped off and nobody should be allowed to walk by and it should be like this is where Patrick Pierce this is it I am getting proper emotional but there's the Jim Larkin statue so for anyone who doesn't know Jim Larkin organized and orchestrated the Dublin lockout in 1913 which it was a, like a city-wide strike but it sort of fanned the flames of nationalism because a lot of the employers just started to get British labour in it kind of resulted in a lot of like people realizing that the Dublin workers themselves weren't valued although everyone ended up kind of going back to work in 1914 it, it really sort of unified all the sort of unrest of people together and it prompted a lot of people to turn to nationalism and so James Connolly was already a separatist at this point but Patrick Pierce was actually a constitutional nationalist still at this point and it was really through the lockout that he really turned to become a separatist to relate it to a history that people might be a little more aware of if you're not so into your Irish history Sylvia Pankhurst who was like so far ahead of so many of the other suffragette key players in terms of what we would now call intersectional feminism and she really you know she became a communist and she really saw the sort of intersection of um, privilege between working class and privileged middle class and being female versus being male and she saw I think a lot more nuances to it than Emmeline Pankhurst and Christabel Pankhurst you know she ended up expelled from the main suffragette party and it, it was partly because of her support of the Dublin lockout and socialism and you know they just felt that she wasn't focused enough on the fight for for women's rights so she was expelled kind of relates in there and that's maybe a bit of history that people are a bit more familiar with um if you don't know about Jim Larkin himself but yeah so just behind there that's the Millennium Spire still behind a tree but just here guys after Jim Larkin lockout brought the the politics of it all together this is where Patrick Pierce stood and read the the proclamation of the Irish Republic it's oh this feels just I just I feel so sort of emotional standing here and um you know the thing at the time was on the day he actually came out and read it like people got bored listening to him and started just what like he had like crowds of like different accounts say between 15 and 25 people at most around him and then people got bored and they wandered on and you kind of think now like did you realize like what was happening that day and what that was going to lead to
just had to like stop filming for a good 15 minutes to have a good cry like I know it sounds absolutely ridiculous like standing here crying over a building but like just the things that that this building has seen and been a part of and like if this building could come to life and it could talk and the things it could tell us. We're, we're getting a theme to my vlog was to be like, have some Christmas and then have me like crying over something historical. Um, but yeah, have some Christmas. There, there's, there's a Christmas tree coming up. Come on, I'll show you a Christmas tree. It's supposed to be vlogging this after all, isn't it? There you go, have a Christmas tree. <laughs> Festive cheer, let's, let's get back into that mode. There we go, that's pretty, isn't it? That's. That's more what we want from Vlogmas, not me howling over people who are executed and hoping that everything religious people tell us about God and the afterlife is true so that they can know they weren't executed for nothing. That's not the most festive chat, is it? Let's look at some lights. That's, that's preferable. There we go. There's some, there's some festive music and everything going on here. Probably get copyrighted in YouTube, but there's this thing I think it's all about sexist adverts because all of them seem pretty problematic. But um, yeah, if anyone's a Mad Men fan, there's a Lucky Strike cigarette with it's toasted on it. If anyone's a Mad Men fan. Isn't that the creepiest thing you've ever read? Baby soft, because innocence is sexier than you think. Ugh. With a teddy, I mean, what's even going on in that? Ugh. <laughs> to be fair, this one is from Dove, and that's Dove's, like, Everybody is beautiful campaign, which I think was was different to everything else on this that has been. Yeah, oh, horrible. But but there's a nice reference for Mad Men. And I ended the vlog with my hand right over the the bit that actually picks up the sound on the camera. So I went back to the hotel. I had a donut from the Rolling Donut. It was one of the Christmas ones. It was very good, but I was still to try offbeat donuts at this point, so the battle of the donuts was still to commence. And I did a face mask, and that was the end of my first day in Dublin. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and I will see you tomorrow for Vlogmas Day 16.